Hey everybody, welcome back to the video's channel and today we look into the release of Nuxt 4. Here we go. I know we've waited long for that moment. Uh, it's been a year, even a bit more than that. But finally it happened last week. Nuxt 4 got its official release. After the announcement earlier uh, that Nuxt 4 will come out very soon, that happened with alphas, with release candidates, and eventually with the full release. Actually, we even have version 4.0.1 at the time of recording out there with some first patches, which is always a good sign. So people use Next 4, report some issues or problems, hopefully not too many, and then they'll get fixed and addressed quickly, which is the other part of that. I've also covered in various videos why Next 4 comes now, why the Nitro changes, for example, not included. Please refer to the uh, two major versions for that. And uh, in this video, I just wanna give like a big overview what's coming with Nuxt 4. So you don't have to go through all that content and get one concise video. So let's get started with the features. So how many new features are there in Nuxt 4? Zero. And now you might wonder like, wait, what? There's a major version, why are there zero new features? Well, of course, because features are shipped in minor versions, not in major versions. As we know, semantic versioning, Major is there for breaking changes, and there are quite a few, not as many as in 2.2.3, luckily, right, where everything changed, but there are still a few we want to take a look at. Then the minor versions where features come in and the patch versions, so the last number usually, where we have some bug fixes. And since the point that Nuxt 4 was announced, we always wanted to make sure that we'll give you this like hype-free release in terms of, okay, no new features to get crazy about because we ship them continuously every month or so when there's a minor version, given the release schedule, but focus on making the change to stomach the breaking changes as easy as possible. And I think that worked out quite well. So let's have a look at that. Let's see, if maybe there's still one or another feature that is also a breaking change. Um, so let's have a look here. And the very first thing you can take a look at is the new CLI. So if you start a new application with PMPM create Nuxt, then of course we have this wonderful CLI that didn't come with version four, so that was already available earlier. But for some of you creating new projects now with the V4 change saying, okay, I wanna give it a try, or maybe just testing things out or creating a reproduction, that's the way to go here. And here we see our level CLI. We have this nice ASCII art. We can define a folder, nothing new. All right, we can uh, change the package manager if we want to, we stick with PMPM here. Dependencies will be installed, lovely. But there are some new changes that come right after the step. Because now we have a mini wizard, even after um, asking if it's a Git repository, we say no here. The CLI asks if we want to install any of the official modules. And this is more or less the compromise between having a big wizard of saying which UI library do you want to use? Do you want to use ESLint? Do you want to use uh, Prettier, etc., etc.? Uh, instead, we just want to give you the choice of installing some modules right out of the box. And of course, other than that, you can also define your own templates if you want to. Um, that would be also another option if you need something on there. But that might be for another video. So here, if we say yes, and we want to use some of the official modules, well, then we see we have a couple options. Next content, obviously for having a CMS that's file-based, ESLint as mentioned, next fonts, icon, also an, an evergreen, next image, next scripts. Commonly also like next fonts, icon, image scripts are in a lot of these projects that I've, I've commonly seen. A test utils, also we need tests, right? Well, you actually do need tests, so write them, okay? And if you want a UI library, of course, Nuxt UI, which will also get all the pro components for free because of the versatile acquisition later when it hits version four in this autumn. Nevertheless, now we can choose all the modules. We say, let's go. They're all installed or they're sometimes already included based on another module. So that's also great. And dependencies will be installed and we're good to go from here. And if we then jump into our new Nuxt application, I've chosen here one that's very plain without any modules to avoid some clutter we will see the structure is a bit changed. And also that is not necessarily new for all the people following the Nuxt development for a bit um, and also the uh, GitHub repository. So we've talked a lot about there that we want to change the folder structure a little bit to move everything that's not server related into an app directory. And we asked you for names, app was the best we could come up with and people also went for that mostly. There were a lot of good suggestions, but app was fitting the best. Still, if you don't like the app name, you can rename it. That's no problem. You can rename it to anything you want like source, but source is also not fully correct. 
So let's uh, take a look at the code here. Yeah, and then we have this app directory with the app.view and in here you would bring things like uh, pages, index.view, for example, you would put your components in here. So let's say components, my uh, app button, the view, uh, we can put a lot of things in here. The only thing that doesn't go in here is the server. So the server folder comes extra. And we also have a new folder, which is called shared, because very commonly, if you build things with a server, so like a backend for frontend or an actual Nitro backend, and you're actually next application, then you need some things that you want to have on the server, but also on the application that are contextless. Think of Azot schemas, types, models. So they all belong in there. And here you can put, for example, utils in, uh, utils, I don't know, const.ts, and you can even put your types in there as well. My types.ts, for example, or DTS, it doesn't matter too much. And you can then auto import them easily. This is already set up. You can add other uh, subfolders if you want to, and then you can also make sure they're auto imported. And of course, they don't come in server, but shared, pardon me here. The server folder, of course, classically for API routes. So if you have API tests.ts, and here we can define our Nitro event handler as usual and just return some uh, message. Okay, and we're good to go. But this structure is not the only thing that is new when it comes to the Nux project. There's also another great thing with regards to TypeScript. Before we jump to that though, if you don't like the new folder structure or if you're migrating, talk about that in a bit, no problem, this is opt-in. That's the fun part. The old structure is still supported. You don't have to change everything around, but it gives you some benefits like file watching in dev will be better because you don't have to watch the node modules folder anymore. Otherwise, that wasn't really possible because, well, everything in the root folder is watched. Now we can just say watch app, watch server, watch shared, and a few more, and you're good to go. So the new app structure was not just like, oh yeah, we want to, I don't know, name something called app. It's really for clarity in terms of what is server only, what is your Nox slash view part, and also, as said, for performance during dev, type checking, etc. Coming to type checking, though, let's have a look at what's the other new thing. And this is actually the TS config. If you have a look at the TS config, this is different because if you remember in other Nux projects, you have a server a folder by default, and then in here you have a server and TypeScript config. And now this TS config here is actually organized by references. So we, here we have the app, server, shared, and nodes. And if we have a look at these are all coming from the uh, .nux folder here. So if you have a look, and of course, before you want to run the dev server or run the prepare command, we have this config here, right? And they include all the auto imports, all the aliases, etc., etc. And that also allows you to now make sure that you don't do anything that is not allowed in the server part, like trying to import a, I don't know, a Pina store there with auto imports. And also your next config will now not, I don't know, have auto completes for use storage anymore as we see here, and other composable. So this is pretty helpful, it's more accurate, and we have this nice distinction. Especially if you work a lot of different contexts with like, oh, I've been on the server, a bit on the next side, shared folder, it's easy to like be confused at some point, do something wrong, that will be avoided, plus more accurate type inference, so you actually get the types only for the context that you need. Great. Also here, if you have an old TS config, you didn't upgrade to that yet, no problem, it's detected, it will be fine. But as usual, upgrading here is recommended. Of course, other than that, there are a lot of changes regarding to performance, regarding we have some breaking changes here as well, refactors, etc., etc. You don't have to go through the whole change log, though of course, as usual, it is recommended to have a brief look over it. But luckily, there is a migration guide. So let's talk about upgrading and migrating from a previous version. The first path they consider is for all the poor souls out there who still are on Nux 2 and want to upgrade now and wonder, Nux 3, first of all, or straight away to Nux 4. And to be honest, it depends a lot on your case, but it's also fine to straight away go for Nux 4 if you migrate anyway. A lot of modules are up to date, you shouldn't have any issues there, but that also means obviously jumping uh, through all the changes at once. It's also fine to say I do the Nux 3 migration first and then 4. Luckily, 3 to 4 shouldn't take long. I've seen a lot of people said, yeah, 15 minutes and done. Even bigger application took instead of months or weeks, more days. All depends on what you're doing with the framework. But that is the key here. We want to make it as easy as possible for you. If you're already on Nuxt 4, then it's pretty easy. You just run pmpm Nuxt upgrade or pmpm Nuxt upgrade dash dash dedupe, which will deduplicate your node modules, and then you're good to go. And from there, it's up to you to go through this wonderful migration guide here, 
We also partner with code mods, so you can use code mods to migrate certain things over. Keep in mind, not everything is covered by that, but they can help. Also, if you use them, please let us know what you think, either in the comments, as usual, or as an issue or discussion in the Nuxt repository or in the Discord, up to you. So let's have a look at the biggest changes. And the first one already mentions the new directory structure. As said before, you can keep them as is, but it's well explained what the changes here entail. Also, certain folders like modules, layers, public stay, of course, at the root directory. So next to or as a sibling to the app directory or server directory. Same for Nuxt content. Content is also top level. From that perspective, you can always think of, is it more Nuxt in view only? Then it goes into app. If it's server only, it goes to server. And if it's kind of both, like modules, layers, content, etc., keep a top level. That also applies to folders you use yourself. So if you create some folders for yourself, that's uh, a way to go there too from just thinking of where to put it and locate it. We also see a larger folder structure here. Keep in mind, you don't need all the folders, but it's possible. And as mentioned, you can use the older folder structure as well. It's important though that the alias, the tilde alias, right, or the add alias, now they point to app instead of the actual uh, root directory, which was the same as the double tilde or the double add before, because it was equivalent. So make sure if you say, I don't know, tilde slash public or tilde slash pages, uh, these are different. Pages was to work because it's an app, but tilde slash public is not there anymore. Though you probably shouldn't use an alias like that anyway. So keep in mind, if you want to access the root directory, use the double add or double tilde. If you want the app or server directory, depending on the context, then it is the single one. Another big topic is the singleton data fetching layer. This is a bit more complex though, so I thought I might make an extra video on that if you want to. Let me know in the comments if you want about all the changes in 3.17 and also in 4.0 because this is kind of twofold. Pretty interesting, uh, can be quite helpful, but also changes a bit the way you think about use async data and use fetch. So we'll have to skip over that. It's very important to mention though for the structure of the migration guide, we always have an impact level. This is depending on how much effort it is, of course, and maybe also if you're actually affected by a change or not. Uh, and then migration steps, and usually also reason for changes to explain why do we actually do this. And from here, we already go into smaller breaking changes, like the correct module loading order and layers, or that we deduplicate the route metadata now, normalizing components, which is rather more moderate if you use your component names, but still using unhead v2 instead of v1, which is a new release, etc. And from here, really, we have a lot of small things that you might or might not be affected of because a lot of these parts are, for example, for module authors or for people using specific features like, like this one that I've just shown, the new DOM location for the SPA loading screen. In most of the scenarios, you don't need to do anything to change it. The main part is, obviously, if you have the app folder now, you have to change your loading template for the SPA if you ever set one. And other than that, it's just that it's rendered outside of the Nuxt application. Uh, and that is very helpful because that will allow the SPA loading template to remain in the DOM until the view app suspense resolves. So we don't have kind of a flash of um, white screen or the classic. But if you don't use it, if you use only SSR, you're good to go. Same for a lot of other scenarios. And for all of these, we always have a way to say, okay, we can revert to previous behavior. These are flags that you can enable, especially when you want to upgrade to make sure, okay, we might have some things that we can't fix right away. We can still use all the goodies of Nux 4 and later on, for example, uh, upgrade that, change the experimental version back. This was also the case for those people who already use compatibility version because there you also had the option to opt into all the things for Nux 4, so compatibility version 4 back then, and then say, oh yeah, some experimental options, I disabled them because my app's not ready yet. And this is quite helpful for like a more fine-grained upgrading instead of saying, I need to change everything. So keep that in mind. It's not like you have to go through all the lists at once. You can also disable all of the things. Of course, the easiest is to just say, let's upgrade, see what breaks, and then disable things step by step. Then you're ready and then fix them later on. And that kind of brings us to the last part. What is next and what is with next three? Let's start with the latter part. Next 3 will get support for half a year, and support means backporting features and bug fixes. So you actually are not in a rush to migrate. Of course, the earlier the better, right? Um, so you don't have that much tech debt, but of course you have to ship features, you have to keep your applications updated, 
etc. There are also other parts of the ecosystem. You might want to wait for certain libraries or modules, while most of the modules are already ready to go. So you can give it a try and um, have that half year without any issues. After that, uh, Nux3 is end of life. Given that the migration is meant to be seamless or as seamless as possible, half a year seems reasonable. Of course, uh, if there are like big parts of the community saying, okay, this didn't work out for whatever reason, then we can consider uh, also bumping it up. But right now, half a year is our goal. And that's that for Nux3 then. So given, as said, that the step from 3 to 4 is so small compared to 2 to 3 or 1 to 2, if some of the people here have been around back then. Yeah, we, we are very confident in that things will go well and first people migrating in the last week. And all the people using compact version before shown that this is this is reasonable. And next, well, there is Nuxt 5 coming up. I already talked about this in the uh, two major versions video, but this is not necessarily the first priority because there we have to wait for Nitro, uh, which is more than fine. It's not uh, we're not in a rush there, uh, and that will also hopefully be a smooth migration then, then mashing everything together and waiting even longer. But besides that, there are a few more things that we want to take a look at. And some of the issues we want to tackle very soon is, for example, SSR streaming. Uh, Daniel already has a prototype in the works there, so we're really curious to see how that will turn out. Of course, we also have an accessibility module planned to make sure, all right, everything regarding accessibility in your Nuxt application will be reported in the dev tools. That will be very helpful. So that's a work in progress as well, making sure you have a good experience and given the accessibility um, laws that are coming up or are already in effect, to be honest. In, in some countries, this is important. Even besides the laws, accessibility is uh, a key thing for developers and sadly always under radar. So do your fair share and with the tools, we want to help you there. We also want to work on caching strategies for fetch. So we have different ways saying cache first, network first, etc., and also some composable caching utils like time to live cache and so on, so on. And of course, we also want to take a look at uh, dynamically discovering routes uh, with an opt-in behavior, of course. So the initial bundle size could be reduced for even bigger application. So there are a couple of improvements we want to take a look at here. And last but not least, also multi-app support is on the roadmap. Along of many, many other things, because all the other issues they are tracked. This is just a little highlight selection from us, from the team here. Um, also strongly typed fetches. So the body, the query params, our work in progress. That's more on the Nitro side though. Looking forward to that and many, many more things. So stay tuned for all the updates. If you have any questions out there, please drop them in the comments for me. That's it for this week. Have a lovely Friday or whenever you're watching that and uh, see you next week. Happy hacking.